The uh, London Dairy Arts Council is open to all members of the community and surrounding communities. We are promoting um, culture, the cultural arts within our area. You don't have to be a, a London Dairy resident to come to our meetings. We meet on the third Monday of the month at 7 p.m. in the town hall, generally the Sunnycrest room. You don't even have to be an artist. You just have to have an interest in the arts. And we'd be happy to have you because many hands make light work. <laughs> For instance, setting up this show today, we had volunteers um, putting out the, running around putting out the signs last night and this morning, people making wooden signs, people handing out raffle tickets, um, making coffee, um, handling the food. So there's a lot of things that go into running the show that it's very helpful to have more people to help you with. The Arts Council also, um, we run this Art in Action in the fall. We do the same thing in the spring. And um, generally, we also have an art show um, in September. This year, we are going to explore the option of possibly making it an arts festival, combining music and the dramatic arts, as well as the visual arts. And then, of course, the Arts Council, you may or may not realize, is responsible for running the summer concert series from the bandstand on the London Dairy Town Common all summer long. These are free concerts on Wednesday nights. Um, come on out. We really get some great names there. And I can't speak too much to that because I'm more the art side of it, but it, it, um, we really get some good names and it's great music. Art in Action. Um, this, this has been, um, actually, I've been doing this personally since 2011. Um, we run this event in the spring and in the fall. Max Apples and Shady Hill Nursery and Greenhouses graciously um, host us. They pay for us to use their um, electricity and, and their heat and their property. And an artist come in, set up a working studio, also a display, artist for sale. Um, the next event is going to be um, here in Max Apples because um, the spring is actually the less busy time here at Max. They have more space available for us, so we will fill this building with artists. It generally um, is the first or second weekend in May, not Mother's Day weekend, the weekend before, and we publicize it on the London Dairy Arts Council website, which is londonderryartscouncil.org. Org, as well as we have a Facebook page, which is the London Dairy Arts Council. And we certainly invite the public to come visit us at these locations. Some of these artists do this as a hobby. Other artists, such as myself, we do this as a profession. And it certainly um, helps us. The more exposure we have, perhaps you tell, tell, someone, tell someone about our art, or even um, if you buy something, that's even better. But we really like the opportunity to interact with the public. And artists are always welcome. You don't have to be from this area. Um, generally here in, in November, it is open to um, more than just two-dimensional mediums. Um, for instance, this year we have a, a, a printmaker, we have a weaver, we have a paper mache sculptor. Um, in the spring, traditionally it has been two-dimensional fine art, um, but we are open to discussion. If you want to come to a London Dairy Town, uh, the Arts Council Town Meeting, come and talk. We're open to ideas. If we have the people to do it, we'll do it. Uh, my name is Kimberly McCarthy. Um, I'm a bookmaker and a printmaker, and um, I'm demonstrating some of my book binding today and displaying some of my prints as well. Sure. Um, I draw a lot of influences from nature. Um, I do a lot of sketching outdoors and then use those sketches later, compile them into new images um, and use them for my prints. Um, and the books are something I like to do on the side. So, um, Well, I took a course, I studied abroad, um, and I learned bookbinding abroad. And my professor um, was really inspiring. Um, and I fell in love with making books. I'd never heard of it before. A lot of people haven't heard of it. Um, 
and the structure of the books just really drew me in. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, I have a website, um, and I'm trying to get my stuff out there. Um, I'm not in any galleries or anything yet, um, but hopefully soon. Being an artist is about creating things and also about showing people things. Um, the way I see the world and what I think is important, that's, that's what my art is about. And the images I create are things I want people to see and I want people to notice. Thank you so much. My name is Ginny Nickerson. I am painting in this wonderful art and action group. We're having a really nice time working together and uh, though it's a little chilly here <laughs> we are having um, a, a painting uh, actually not all of us paint there's uh, other people down the line here uh, my artwork I work in oils standard oils I work on a red background in order to create a glow and to add interest to the painting. Uh, I have been painting, my husband says, since the dinosaurs roamed. <laughs> but uh, I have enjoyed all manner of art since very young. Um, I went to Mass College of Art and then taught art for many years. Um, Afterwards, I lived on a schooner and enjoyed many years of, of adventure there and gleaning all kinds of background for my art. And now I am, uh, my years are, are devoted to oil painting and it really warms the soul to do it. Uh, I can be found, uh, I'm in Deerfield, New Hampshire, and my, uh, I do not have a website, but you can find me at uh, GN Sail Away Studio at gmail.com. My name is Harriet Winchester. I've been married, so my married name is Kuzdral, and that's been happily for so far for 35 years. We never, never argued. But I use my own, um, my name Harriet Winchester for my for my paintings, um, partly because I didn't get married till I was 29. <laughs> um, I, as I said, did painting from when I was a child and went to Rhode Island School of Design back in the time when um, 
All you were really allowed to do was abstract expressionism, which I didn't care to do, so I came back to New Hampshire, got a regular job, and saved a bunch of money over 10 years, and um, found a perfect guy and a nice little house. And then eventually I did go back to painting and decided I would paint the way I want to, which is realism. Um, and work with Pastel for about 22 years. The, um, I don't know what you can see on the, the still life. Um, this one's Pastel, um, and the bottom one is Pastel. Um, but after some 22 years or so, I got, um, so I couldn't stand the dust anymore. And so then I switched to oil painting, maybe about three or four years ago. Um, it's a um, water cleanup oil, so it, it handles basically like a regular oil paint and it has its own medium so that you can mix it with a compatible um, medium and not worry about your longevity and everything. Um, but it, it does, you know, I didn't, didn't jump from pastel dust to turpentine, so <laughs> I guess I'm okay. And then some of my, my newer ones are, um, well, some of them are still trees. This old um, red maple is at Salmon Brook in Nashua, where the footbridge goes over. And it used to be, um, years ago, the, the people were allowed to swim here. And the beautiful little park, still a beautiful little park, has been fixed up. It has a lovely old tree in it. Um, uh, I, I also climbed mountains a lot, and so I've got Mount Major up in Alton, which is a very, very popular hiking mountain, partly because it's bald on top, and you get a beautiful view of Winnipesaukee from the top. If you look in the t Nashua telephone book, if anybody uses telephone books anymore, I'm actually listed under Harriet Winchester, and then the, the number is there for my home and studio. Most of my paintings I sell at outdoor shows um, and other things you could probably, I have had things at um, Maison de l'Art in Nashua. I don't currently have anything there, but the gallery owner does know me and you could ask her too. Um, I got interested in old trees um, maybe three years ago when I was reading um, Bill Bryson's Walk in the Woods about the guy, old guys who decided they would do the Appalachian Trail without having the foggiest idea what they were doing. And in there, he, he talks about um, the, um, the, tr the way the trail has changed since what was laid out in the teens and 20s. And it used to go through some villages and some farms but now it's been rerouted, so it goes on the ridge lines, and um, it, it's going through woods. It, you can spend a couple of days just walking through the woods, and the trees are all um, maybe eight, ten, maybe four to six inches because they're all fairly new trees. And then he he says in there a little bit about what the forest looked like when the when the trail was laid out. There were still American chestnuts, which in some places were one quarter of the trees, and they're four feet in diameter, six feet in diameter. I just started thinking about how different the forests looked and how wonderful the old trees were. And so this particular tree is um, it's a white oak that's in um, Nashua in some conservation land that was in the same family from 1770. And it's, my husband and I, I think it took one of me and two of him to reach all the way around it. So it's a good, um, it would be 15 feet anyhow in diameter or, or maybe a little more. Um, and it, it just has, it, it may be, it's probably not as old as the conservation land, maybe, um, <laughs> Because the conservation land is more, 
was in the same family for more than 200. So whether this is original with that farm from way back when, I don't know. But um, I just got very, very interested in the old trees. Uh, my name is Steve Sullivan, I'm actually a member of the Londonderry Arts Council here. Um, we're putting on our uh, fall version of the Art in Action. We do two every year. Um, so basically we have a lot of local artists here at Max Apples as well as over at the Shady Hill Greenhouses. Um, not only uh, displaying their work and selling their work, but also um, demonstrating their process. So um, people get a chance to kind of see some work in action as well as finished products too. Uh, my artwork um, very recently has been uh, kind of a um, just dealing with um, my experience as a Peace Corps volunteer in Senegal, West Africa. Um, I was there for a little over three years uh, working in sustainable agriculture, so it was a very small village. Um, so some of the paintings I did are just kind of like depictions of that, um, more for my own sake, like cathartic, catharsisism. And, uh, then also just kind of um, rectifying that with um, my new experience of coming back home and working in a restaurant business and just kind of how those two very disparate worlds kind of collide in my life. Uh, so, um, so that's kind of where I'm working at right now. I'm a part-time Masters of Fine Art student at MassArt, um, so that's kind of like the concept that I'm working with. Um, but not only my own, my, own, my own experience between those two worlds, but also just the ideas of like waste and value and what what that means and um, so a little all over the, all over the place. So just some examples of where those two worlds for me meet is um, just seeing um, seeing similarities, I guess, uh, formally between the um, between the village life uh, and the agricultural experience there, and then the first world uh, restaurant food production business. Um, in some ways that I did that um, or by painting scenes from the village that I had um, photographed different activity like different um, different projects different activities that we had done and then actually using recycled material from the restaurant uh, the crayons that normally get thrown away every day that kids use for the kids meals regardless of what the condition is they always go right in the trash so I saved a lot of them and have started kind of using them as a medium um, melting them down as like uh, encaustic which is like anytime you use wax so it's kind of where I'm at. What's it like to be an artist today? Um, I think it's very, uh, I think a lot of artists today have a lot more responsibility, at least in terms of um, being very educated and in, uh, in terms of like global issues, not just, um, not just, I mean, not that there's not a place for um, abstract expressionism, like bringing out whatever is inside of you, but I think there's also a much more of a need today in terms of like, in terms of artists having um, having a voice in uh, issues that are larger than, than themselves, uh, at least in my own my own opinion, I think there's a not only do artists have a lot more opportunity to be able to branch out and uh, just get the public involved in much more poetic ways than just you know a politician up at a podium. We have a much more unique way of getting um, of getting people uh, motivated or getting people interested in in uh, different subjects. Um, so I think it's I think. I think artists today have a lot a bigger responsibility, I think, um, to be able to do that, to think on a bigger scale um, than maybe they had in the past. But When I came back from Peace Corps, it was kind of like I had an undergraduate degree in fine art, and then um, I had this three years of experience in agriculture, uh, agricultural development work. Um, so those two kind of don't really go together in terms of um, job work or putting on a resume. So it was mostly, um, mostly because I felt like it would help me in terms of uh, finding a new direction for my work or um, a way for me to be able to talk about my experience and then also continue to, because th one of the goals of Peace Corps is, um, the third goal is to come home and just kind of and be able to um, not educate the public about what you what you did or the people there, but just bas basically um, raising awareness to people that like these other people in the world do exist this other culture still exists um, and maybe just you know shining some light on that so that's this is kind of like my way of being able to do it and um, going back to school was just a really good way to help facilitate that for me um, especially since I had been out of the um, art school or just like in the art world I had been out of it for a long time so getting it's my it's a good way for me to get back 
reacquainted with it, I guess. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a lot out of it. Um, I'm starting to uh, have had great mentors that have just helped me progress uh, quite a bit uh, in terms of like concept, my conceptual thinking, uh, not just thinking about um, imagery, but uh, being able to do other other things like you know uh, more socially engaged artwork. Um, uh, not necessarily just putting you know paint on canvas. Um, so I've really just been able to branch out in terms of my thinking and kind of going all in, all in different directions, but around like a central kind of thread, which has been really good for me to help help develop that. And um, finding that I'm actually a lot of the work that I'm doing is um, I'm being able to reach a larger audience because the Senegal experience started me off in a certain direction, and then school has been able to help me. Uh, develop that so I'm not really pigeonholing myself into just talking about Senegal but what what through my Senegal experience can I talk about that will that actually affects a larger audience that will resonate with more people this work here um, is actually kind of just a fun piece for me um, it's a triptych so if you put them all together each piece ideally uh, when it's all said and done will be able to work on their own but um, they do also go together uh, to make this image of a of a, a waterfall um, that's in Senegal, it's called uh, called Ingli. Um, it's very very difficult to get to, um, and uh, there's just be, there everyone that takes a picture of it just gets an amazing shot no matter what. It's one of those uh, hopelessly photo photogenic places, photographic places. Uh, so um, so this one in particular. Um, I made it a triptych because I just found these three pieces of wood in the in the free pile at my studio, and so that was partly why I made it became a triptych. And the reason why it's kind of a fun a fun project uh, for me is because uh, it's a wedding present uh, for two of my Peace Corps volunteer friends uh, who uh, got married, met in Peace Corps, fell in love. This was where they uh, officially became like a couple. It was their visit to Ingli, and then uh, now they're they're married. So this is my. Uh, wedding present they asked for a painting of Ingley. I don't know they probably weren't expecting something quite like this but I think they're the type of people that I think they'll like it so um, my name is Kate Kilgus I'm from Londonderry originally born in Buffalo New York um, fiber arts was always a part of our family uh, my great-grandfather was a carpet weaver from Scotland. He worked in a carpet mill after he lost his leg in World War I. And uh, so kind of the, the whole weaving um, textile, um, textile as profession um, was part of my growing up. Uh, my mother is a quilter and a knitter and uh, my dad is a boat builder. And so I kind of grew up in a family that valued traditional craft which I appreciate. Um, I did um, go to the University of Michigan for um, undergraduate and graduate school, and when my children were small, I decided that I wanted to do something um, a little bit more creative and that would allow me to stay at home. And so I took a class, kind of on a whim, um, at a weaving studio outside of Ann Arbor and um, decided that I had to have a loom. <laughs> and uh, started off with a very simple table loom that I got used and that was 16 years ago and now I have three looms and uh, actually sustainable business um, that I have started from uh, pretty much nothing. <laughs> um, weaving is something I do as a profession and um, this is a loom. It's from Harrisville, New Hampshire. It's a Harrisville design. It's uh, what I like to call the world's oldest uh, fiber arts machine. It's a combination of wood and uh, pulleys, ratchets, and pawls. And basically, it just allows me to organize some threads um, that go through the loom. They're called the warp threads. And you make cloth by intersecting weft the threads with the warp. And um, depending on what the purpose is of the cloth that you're making, you choose different fibers and different weaving structures. And here, this is um, going to be a table runner. So I selected a mercerized cotton um, to use for both the warp and the weft. And it's easy to care for. It will, you know, 
won't hold stains. You can put it in your washing machine and dryer. And um, the pattern here is a very old pattern. Um, it's a loom controlled lace. And it's just a series of uh, floats, both in the weft, with the weft threads and the warp threads, and um, a regular, um, regular treadling and weaving uh, in your harnesses and in your, with your pedals will create pattern. Um, I also weave traditional Scottish tartans using alpaca and silk primarily for my yarns. Um, I just like the way they feel and they're very insulating and they tend not to be scratchy. Um, and just utilitarian pieces for the home, dish towels, dish cloths, things that you use every day, but that um, tend to work pretty well. Um, I do have a website, um, www.nutfieldweaver.com. And um, I am also going to be selling in the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen um, retail shops throughout the state. Um, I'll be able to tell you which ones, hopefully within the next month or so. Um, and my website does detail my exhibit venues that are forthcoming. I just started participating in the Arts Council. I was invited by Barbara Scott to um, come to some meetings and to participate in this art in action. And it's been great to meet um, you know, fellow art artisans of the community and artists. And um, I think that the work that they do is just fantastic because it does allow us to, to meet our neighbors and show, show them what we do. And um, it's, just, it's a really important thing to keep a, keep a community unique and um, interesting. Um, I'm Susan E. Hanna, and my art studio is SEH Studios. I'm located here in Londonderry. I do work out of my home. This is what I do for a living. I sell my art um, at exhibits like this, and also um, in businesses. For instance, my art always hangs year-round in the tasting room of the Moonlight Meadery, and it's in various places up in the White Mountains. I'm a painter in oils. Um, I generally do um, realistic, what they call representational art, where you can tell what it is by looking at it. Um, I do some acrylics. I do about half of my work while I'm actually in plein air, uh, standing out in the field, painting the scene that I'm looking at. I travel up to the White Mountains. I travel to the sea coast. I travel up and down the coast of the United States, um, painting wherever I go. But the other half is work that I do in the studio. Generally, larger pieces are studio pieces because they are simply, um, it, it's too big to carry around in the wind. And when you're painting outside, the scene changes, the light changes, the weather changes, that sun keeps moving across the sky. So you don't necessarily get the same light as you would um, when you're working in the studio. Being an artist today, um, for me, is very fulfilling because it's a very peaceful endeavor. Um, yes, I'm working a lot. There's a whole business side that takes you out of the studio, away from the easel. You're not painting. You're not producing. You have to have a website. You really need to be on Facebook. You really need to get out to events where you can talk to people because people buy just as much from the person, the artist, as they do from a piece uh, just because they love a piece. And when the two coincide, that, of course, that's perfect. So you have to be able to um, think about how you're going to promote, promote your art as well as produce your art in order to be an artist today. Um, another way artists have to supplement their income in the current day and age is by giving lessons. And I also offer private lessons um, in my home or in their home to the individual, to their specific level. You get about an hour and a half of my undivided attention. Uh, hi, I'm Mary Ellen Brown. Um, I have been painting most of my life, but I have settled in on pastels, which um, are solid pigment. Um, they, if you added, crushed them up and added oils to them, you would have oil paint, but I like the idea of being able to work with them dry. 
I feel that they give me a really good um, depth um, in my paintings. And um, I used to do mostly portrait paintings in both oils and pastels. And uh, since uh, about um, the late 2000, like six or so, I've concentrated on um, still lifes. I am a realist um, because I just love reality because it speaks in every language in the world. Um, I also like it because um, I'm very detailed, very detail oriented, and I can do a lot with the pastels and the soft pastel pencils. Um, I've been here at App Max Apple Farm before um, last year and just loved it. Had a wonderful time painting, enjoying the other artists and learning more about other other arts, which is um, the Londonderry Arts Council is wonderful and very open and uh, very caring for all of us. Um, I have an apple here that I did last year here. It's called Max Apple. Um, I happened to p be able to pick it right out of his bin um, when I was here, and I wanted. I thought, well, what better things to paint at Max Apple than apples? So that's what I'm doing. So today I'm working on. I brought my grandchildren here, apple picking, and picked uh, these apples and had a little piece of a branch with leaves. It's not that often that I can get the leaves to go along with the, the apples. Um, I like simple elegance, and I love to paint um, lace. Um, so I, um, I have put the apples on a, an old-fashioned lace piece that I got at a yard sale. Um, my whites are not pure white. There's all different colors in the whites. White is never pure white or it looks flat. Um, this painting here is uh, where I took the, the painting, the picture outside so that I could get um, really sharp shadows and, and reflections. It's, um, it's called Reflections in Contrast into the white pot and into the watering can. Um, I am a full-time artist now. Um, I have a studio in my home. Um, I just love painting. I could paint from morning till night. Uh, I just love it. It just, to me, it's the most relaxing thing that I can do. And the reward of the product that I get at the end is wonderful. Um, I do have prints made and cards made um, at a place in Methuen that does a wonderful job. And um, I just, it's part of my life since I was a child. I've painted since I was a child and I just truly believe that um, it's, um, it's a gift. And, but I think anybody can learn to paint. I really do. I am in several galleries. I'm in the Sharon Arts Gallery in Peterborough. I'm in the Maison de la Art Gallery in Nashua. Um, I have a website, uh, which is www.maryellenbrown-fineart.com, and you can find my work on there and contact me. I am going to be starting. Um, a new thing, um, marketing has changed amazingly. When I was in college, my minor was marketing and it's changed amazingly since then with all of this online selling. So I am now developing an online, I have a website, but I'm developing an online store um, to sell paintings. Um, and I'm gonna be having some printed on canvas wraps um, so that somebody might not need glass or a frame. Regular pastels need to be protected with glass. And, um, and I, pay, I frame, my husband does my framing, he's wonderful. 
and I frame mostly in gold, uh, because if you go into a, a museum, which I hope I'm in someday, <laughs> um, you, every frame that you see is gold. Um, it just gives a, a special elegance to your paintings. Every, 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 every painting that I do has a story behind it, and I believe that um, painting and art records history. And so um, there's a story behind every painting that I have. The one that you see in the center, the print, is a Limoges, my friend's Limoges uh, letter carrier. And I put it into a, um, a Victorian setting. The lamp came from my, my living room, and I put the red cloth down the back. I also have been trained in photography, so I know how to get the uh, use photography techniques. I take all the pictures myself, and uh, my husband puts them on the computer for me so that we can print them out. And some I stick right to the um, to my picture, and some I change according to what's more pleasing to the eye. My name is Karen Jagir and I'm a co-chairman of this Fall Art in Action show this year hosted at Chaving Hill and Max Apple. And I'm with the London Dairy Arts Council and we try to boost uh, uh, arts in the town of London Dairy. Um, usually we do in our spring show we just have it at Max Apple, but in the fall show we have it at the two locations, Shady Hill Nursery and Greenhouses here and Max Apples. Um, my name is Kimberly. Um, I, I started Kimberly's Creatures, which is a, a paper and cloth mache uh, sculpting. Um, I sculpt and paint them. Um, and I, I got into this because of my stepdaughter. Um, she, I was trying to get her off of Facebook and off the iTunes and wanted to get more involved with her. So I thought, what kid doesn't like paper mache? And um, I have one. <laughs> she, she's much more uh, interested in, in, in singing, and she's an absolutely fabulous singer. So that's really her her thing. But because I was doing all the research and, and the techniques on how to do it to do a project with her, I started to really enjoy that and found that there's so much versatility that you can do with paper. Um, so that's why I, was, I got into it. As far as dragons, getting into doing dragons, a dragon can be anything. It's any amount of imagination that you've got. It can have horns, it can have fins, it can have gills, it can have be any color. It can have spots or stripes or anything. Um, so I think that, that the dragons just lend itself to be totally your imagination. Whereas the dinosaurs, I had to do a lot more research to do the dinosaurs. Um, a lot of times I will get a face on one of my pieces and the way that the face shows up is kind of telling me what it's going to be, whether it's going to be a happy dragon or an angry dragon. Um, and as far as marketing the pieces, I, I'm actually getting involved with a lot of the, the art associations in the area and their events, um, such as the art councils and the art in action here. Um, I did the art walk a couple of weeks in Nashua. Um, the Bedford Crafters Guild, I got juried with, with them, so I'm going to be in, in their show in um, the, the month of December when they do their holiday show. Um, and I'm looking to branch out and go down to Boston. I'll be showing in, in two of the, the art shows in Boston. 
at the um, science fiction conventions down there. And in May of next year, I'll be showing at the um, uh, the Renaissance Fair over in Kingston. So that should be a good fun show to do too. Um, well, I have a web a web page. It's Kimberly's Creatures at Webley or Kimberly's Creatures Webley dot com, um, or you can just Google Kimberly's Creatures and it should come up there. Um, from there, I, I, I actually have named Dan Reeder and the Gourmet Paper Mache website where I learned my techniques. Um, but you can see all these pieces and actually you can see all the processes on my webpage of how each of these pieces was made. And I just had them back here to dry in front of the fan. But you can see how the eyes on them and the faces on them will really make a difference on what they, what they look like. He's happy and got bright horns and he's kind of sinister and he's getting more, more sinister. It is. So it sets their personality. Yeah, it does. It does.